Okay, so beginner gentle yoga. It's not really beginner because like some of these things are hard to do, like getting up and down off the floor and so on. But it's what we call beginner gentle yoga, which is it's relatively accessible and calming um, and grounding and a little bit invigorating. It's not like uh, um, yin yoga or anything like that, um, but it is calming. Okay, so we've got some kind of strap type object. I've got some yoga blocks, but you could use anything like books or any piece of furniture as arm extenders if you're tight. And we're gonna start in extended child's pose. So come all the way down. And you don't even need a yoga mat, but um, you need something. We are gonna do downward facing dog, so you need something that your arms won't slide on. You have to do child's pose with me. So stretch your arms straight out. Knees are hip distance apart or wider, heels together or toes together. And then forehead comes down and just taking this easy position. You could use your hands to stretch your hips back a little bit toward your heels. And we're just going to start here. And then I will say in the morning, this position is not necessarily super accessible. You know, the knees are springy, they're tight, the low back might be tight. But it's a good check-in to kind of see where your knees, your low back, uh, maybe the top of your feet are at. And I also like this as a starting position because it opens up your back body. So you get that nice big full back body, back of the ribs, back of the heart, open to the sky, and you can find your breath and move with your breath. Big inhale, full exhale. So just starting to warm up the breath, your attention to the breath. And obviously when you breathe in this position, the breath is going to be gently pushed into the back of the ribs just because of the position you're in. So just feel that, notice that the back of the ribs expanding on the inhale and softening on the exhale. Release any, if you can, any tension in the neck. It's a funny position for the neck. So just noticing the base of the skull, the neck, the sides of the shoulders. And then we're going to walk our hands over to the right. So you may want to come up a little bit, lift your stomach up over your thigh right? And then rest it back down. See if you can keep your hips back on your heels. I use my right hand to kind of anchor my hips back and then I'm really stretching through that left arm. So opening up that whole left side body. This is super important right now for our immune systems. I mean, I see this every class I ever teach this pose in. It's always important to open up the side body, to breathe into the sides of the armpits, the sides of the ribs, all that lymphatic tissue there. Nice full breath. Reach your left hip away from your left shoulder. Get a big stretch. And then we'll walk back to center and up over to the left side. So again, you can lift your stomach up over your thigh and then place it back down. Using your left hand to kind of anchor you a little bit, pressing the hips back toward the right heel. Stretch that right arm away from the right hip. So we're pushing the right hip away from the right armpit. Reaching through that whole right rib cage, nice full breath from waistline up to armpit. Let your head go. If you're very flexible, your head might even be on your knee or on the floor. Most of us, it's hovering. That's okay. Big full breath into the side of the ribs, opening up all that lymphatic tissue, the whole side body. We need it. It's like an accordion, opening up the sides of the accordion to breathe. And then back to center. And then reaching the arms back out, we'll come to downward puppy. So I'm tucking my toes under, reaching my arms straight and strong. Hands are outer shoulder distance apart, which for most of us, when I spread my fingers, for most of us, that means the hands are just about to the edge of a yoga mat, right? They're not that much narrower. Um, and then pushing my finger pads down, pushing my knuckles down, lifting the hips straight back away from my arms. So I'm trying to come into that straight angle. Lift the low abdominal muscles to support the low back. Just a big full breath there, trying to reach the sit bones back, get that crease in the hips between the thighs and the waistline. And then we'll go to downward facing dog. So you can, a lot of people have to lean forward here. That is fine, right? And then come up and come up. And then though, once you're up, do bend your knees and lean back again. So if you had to come forward in the tabletop, that's fine. But now bend your knees. Lean the hips back, 
lean the crease of the hips back. Like there's a laundry line and you're kind of hanging over it from the front of the pelvis. So your butt is up, your sit bones are up. Your heels could be way up in the sky, right? Your knees might have to be really bent. And keeping the knees really bent, push in your arms, lean your hips back more, lift your low stomach. Now, if you can keep that action of leaning the hips back as you straighten your legs, go for it. A lot of the times what happens when we straighten our legs, we just start taking the torso forward. So resist that. In that case, just keep bending your knees, lean back. Just one more breath here. And then we'll walk the hands and feet together. So they'll meet somewhere in the middle of your mat, hands and feet toward each other, bending your knees quite a lot so that probably your ribs, your, your stomach are on your thighs, which is totally fine. Right now, that's what we're going for. Then let your head go and hold on to your elbows. So your forearms are crossed on top of each other. Your head and neck can let go. Your feet are hip distance apart and parallel. Your knees are as wide as your feet, so your shins are parallel to each other. You can gently lift your low belly, so you're getting a little bit of space there in the front of the hips, especially if you're more flexible, but we're still doing this with bent knees. I'm still trying to take my sit bones, the, the butt bones, whatever you want to call them, straight back and even widening them a little bit. But my knees didn't move when I did that. Okay, let go of the tension in the back of your neck. Let's switch the grip of the arms. Just a nice, easy head below heart. Find your breath. And then we'll place the hands back down. Walk your hands back to the front of the mat and walk your feet back to the back of the mat. So you're back and downward facing dog. How do you know how far apart uh, how, how long to make your stance. If you go too far back, it's really hard to get your butt up and it's going to be kind of hard on the arms. If you're too close, right, you're not going to get much stretch in the back or the shoulders. So there is a little happy spot for most of us. You can also take your feet as wide as the mat, right, and that will give you more stability. All right, and then come back down onto your knees. And we'll come onto the forearms to give our wrists a break there. In fact, turn your palms face up and spread your fingers. So now my forearms are parallel. My elbows are just about shoulder distance apart. It doesn't matter too much right here. And I've got my fingers spread wide, trying to press the wrists back into the mat, the back of my wrists flat on the mat. And then I'm spreading my fingers and trying to get my thumbnails back onto the mat. This is really useful for all of us that have been doing a lot of um, typing, scrolling, mousing, you get a lot of hand and wrist tension without even realizing it. A lot of face tension connected to hand and wrist tension. And then relax, relax your hands, relax your wrists. And we'll come back onto the hands for straight arms and coming into tabletop. And we're just gonna do a little cat and cow here. So you have option of toes tucked or toes straight, totally up to you. One often makes people's foot cramp more than the other. So your choice. Here we go, we're gonna sink the chest, look up, lift your tail, big inhale, and then exhale, rounding, lifting the back toward the sky. And then inhale, and you'll just continue in this rhythm, inhaling, looking up, tail up, exhale, rounding, articulating the spine, tucking those front ribs in as if you're taking the crown of your head to your tail. And then big inhale, look up, and exhale, rounding. Big, full breath. If you can breathe through your nose, go for it. A lot of times when we start our practice, we are breathing through the mouth in the beginning. And slowly, as things move and clear out, maybe we can breathe more and more through the nose. It is a little more calming to the nervous system to breathe through the nose. It gives the vagus nerve a little more tone. Big inhale, look up. And exhale, rounding, rounding. And then we'll come back to neutral. And we're going to do that crossover. So we're going to take the left arm, palm face up, thread it through underneath the right arm, come all the way onto the outside of the left shoulder, bring your head, the side of your left head, down to the mat, and come up on your right fingertips. So you're making a little window with your right arm. The hips are staying squared off in this case, more or less. 
And I'm just breathing, opening up that whole left shoulder blade. It's a very simple twist. Head below heart, hips are lifted. My left palm is face up. My right arm is just gently supporting me at a right angle. Nice full breath there. Get into the sides of the waist. One more big inhale, full exhale, and back to center. And then to the second side. So my right arm threads through palm face up. I'm going to come onto my right shoulder, the side, the right side of my head. Come up on your left fingertips. It just lets you have a little more of a window on that left side so you can draw the left shoulder blade back. Hips are more or less squared off. Check the line from your tailbone out through the crown of your head. Just connect to that energetically. You don't have to do anything to it. Just notice you're revolving around that axis, tail to head, head to tail, big full breath, inhale, full exhale, and then back to center. Okay, a little cross crawl. We'll, we'll take the, let's do it this way, the way we've been doing it in our other um, creative core class. Lift your back, so you're tucking your tail first, Sneak your right leg back behind you. So toe is still down on the mat, but the right leg is straight. I'm trying to tuck my tail and then try to lift that leg. So my knee squared off to the mat. I'm trying to lift the leg as if I'm still trying to tuck my tail. So I'm not going to be lift that leg very high, right? Because it, that would put me into a low back arch. Now take your left arm up. Again, it's not going to go very high. Now purpose, so that's like you're in the cat part of cat and cow, like I'm trying to round. Now look up, inhale, and arch your back. And then exhale, round. Okay, so my right leg is lifted, my left arm is lifted. And then I inhale and I lift a little bit higher. And then exhale, round. So it's like doing cat and cow with one arm up and one leg up, opposite arm and leg. <laughs> it's hard to do otherwise. And then exhale, round. And one more time, inhale, look up. And then exhale, hand and knee back down. Okay? A little variation on that exercise we often do. So once again, lift your spine toward the sky, round it toward the sky, tuck your tail, sneak your left leg back first on the floor with your toes face down, your left knee face down. Just get that pose first. Like you're opening up the front of the left hip, kind of hollowing that. Then take your right arm up. We're still hollowing. We're not able to lift very high yet. Now I'm gonna lift my left leg, hover it. Okay, so I'm rounded toward the sky. Then I'm gonna inhale, look up, lift my arm and leg and I'm arching my back. And then exhale and round and inhale, lift. My left leg is still hovering. I'm not necessarily touching the ground when I round, I could, but it lifts up and exhale to round. And one more time, inhale, lifting and exhale, round and then place that hand and knee back down okay tuck your toes under you so let's bring the toes apart a little bit the heels together and sit back for toe breaker pose so i don't know about you guys but if you haven't done this for a while it's pretty intense on the toes i got my toes tucked i'm going to even try to spread my pinky toes out a little bit more sitting back so let's say that's really hard on the toes i can lean forward take little breaks um, sometimes for me lately, this has been hard on the top of the knee, that quadriceps has been really tight. So just sitting here. And then if that gets too much, because we're gonna do some arm stuff, if that gets too much, just point your toes straight back behind you, not, not a problem. Okay, otherwise, take your hands out in front of you, interlace your hands, turn your palms face away, lift your arms up overhead. Big stretch, big inhale. And then exhale, hands come down. Interlace your hands the other way, other pinky on the outside, turn your palms face away. So let's say my, my toes are, if my toes were killing, I could just come up, right? I could come up like that and stretch that way. Lift up through the armpits, lift up through the sides of your waist, top of the shoulders, relax, big inhale, and exhale, come back down. Okay, now do lean forward, point your toes behind you. Let's bring the heels toward each other and the toes a little bit wider, just so we're challenging the top of the big toe joint there. Sit back, okay, so as much as you can. Again, that may not happen, right? And, and that's why you have a block or a book or a cushion. You could sit up on that, 
right, to give you a little less intense stretch. Otherwise, we're working on opening the tops of the feet, okay? It's just sitting. This time, take your arms out in front of you, interlace your hands, keep them palms face each other, make a little steeple, take your arms in line with your ears. So this is where, like I say, this is a gentle yoga class, but it's not a beginner class because for us, most people to straighten their arms in line with their ears, that's actually a pretty advanced action to hug the palms together, straighten those elbows, top of the shoulders down. And I just say that so you pay attention, right? Don't hurt your neck and shoulders. Draw those front ribs in, big inhale. Now open the top of the chest, arch up, look up and exhale, release. There's big straightening through the arms. Okay, coming back to hands and knees. Spread your fingers, walk your hands forward a little bit. Placing your hands carefully for downward dog, tuck your toes, free those toes, lift up, downward facing dog. So remembering every time you can bend your knees a lot, you can lean the hips back. If you're gonna straighten your legs, it's not at the expense of the low back. So that's a demonstration right there of what not to do, how I'm in my shoulders, my tail is tucked. So I'm, to reverse that, I just bend the knees, Lean back. The front ribs are softening in, right? They're not flaring out. Now, leaning onto your left hand, your left foot, take the right leg up to the sky. Three-legged dog, big stretch, big reach it up. Then draw that knee into your chest, hug it in, and we're gonna step the foot forward. Again, not exactly a beginner move. So a lot of times people just get to here, which is fine, and then you would use your hand and bring that foot forward, however you can. So you're coming into this lunge. Come up on your fingertips. Notice how my chest is, or my stomach is on my right thigh. My right foot is pointing straight forward. Lift your left hip up a little bit to try to square off the hips, and then try to scoop your right hip toward your right heel. Relax the back of the neck, find that extension from tailbone out through crown of head. So this is all we're doing, This is just this lunge. There's nothing fancy going on here, we're just, getting grounded through that right thigh bone, pushing into the right heel, pushing the right thigh bone into the hamstring, and then place your hands, and we're gonna step that leg back. So let's say it's stuck, like it's wedged under us, right? Um, I can just sneak it back, wiggle, wiggle. It helps to take it off to the side. That will unstick it as well, okay? So now, leaning onto the right hand and the right foot, take your left leg up. And support your low abdominal muscles. Yeah, use, use the low stomach, lift up from the center of the pelvis, and then we'll draw that left knee into the chest and step it forward. Ideally, right up to the left hand all the way through in one step. Otherwise, we're working on that over time, getting that mobility in the hip joint. You can also always, if you didn't quite make it, you can wiggle the back leg back a little bit. Come up on your fingertips or on either side of your front foot. Stomach and chest, rest on your left leg. We're trying to come to a right angle with that front leg, with that left leg. So my shin is vertical, and I'm trying to really scoop my left hip toward my left heel. Push into your left heel. Lift your right hip up a little bit, like I'm trying to hollow the, right, the front of the right hip just a bit, lifting that right thigh bone into the back plane. As I do the opposite with the left leg, I'm trying to push the left heel down toward the earth, the left thigh bone down to the earth. So a little opposition there. Then inhale, extending out through the spine, up through the crown of the head. And exhale, ground a little bit more. And then we'll step it back. So if you can, you're pressing down into your hands, kind of free that leg and step it all the way back, downward facing dog. Okay. Let's walk the feet forward to the hands. So you're gonna end up closer to the front of your mat. Feet are parallel and hip distance apart again. Bend your knees a little bit just to get your butt back there, right? Lean back. Lean back and put some weight into your heels. Get the hamstrings loaded. Keep your knees wide. Bring your hands to your knees. Just look up here. So we're arching the back a little bit. And we're sitting into the hamstrings. My knees are as wide as my feet. My sit bones are wide. And then drape again. Okay, now try that same action with your fingertips on the ground. So inhale, look up, extend, exhale, round. One more time, inhale, look up, extend, exhale, round. Some of you can do that with straighter legs, 
but we're still not tucking the tail. So go one more time. Inhale, you could straighten your legs a little bit. Exhale, round. On this next one, come all the way up to stand. Stretch your arms up to the sky. Push into your legs. Inhale, I'm going to face you. And exhale, hands to your sides. Okay. Now let's keep going with the arms. So take your feet hip distance apart, grounding from the core of the pelvis into the earth. Inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale, hands to your sides. Inhale, big full breath. Exhale. Two more times. Inhale, pushing into the legs. Exhale, lift through the top of the chest, but keep those front ribs softening. Inhale, take up space. It's good right now. We got to take up a little more space. There's definitely a feeling of confinement in our world right now. Okay, and now we're going to bow forward. Inhale and exhale, bowing forward. So here you could bend your knees a little bit. Touch down. Inhale, look up. Exhale, bow. And inhale, come all the way up to the sky. Again, big stretch, big arms. Exhale, hands to your sides. Inhale. Exhale to bow. Inhale, look up, extend the sit bones, extend your head. Exhale, round. And then inhale, using the back of the legs to help your low back. Exhale, hands to your sides. Two more times. Big inhale. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, look up. Exhale, bow. And inhale, come all the way up to the sky. Stretch up, look up. Exhale, hands to your sides. One more time. Big inhale. Exhale, so knees are as wide as your feet. Don't let them come together. Inhale, look up even here as you spread the sit bones. Exhale, bow. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to your sides. Okay, now make sure you're up at the front of your mat for this next part. So we go inhale. Exhale to bow. Touch down. Inhale, look up. Step your left foot back to a long lunge. Place your back knee down. Now you could pad that back knee, right? I could roll my mat and pad it right there. And I'm up on my fingertips. And then take your hands to your front knee, come all the way up. Now we're gonna work toward vertical in the back leg. So here I was leaning forward with my hips. Now I'm gonna lean them back. So I'm more like hips over back leg, which means my front leg might be at a, a, an open angle, which that's fine, right? I could sneak my foot back if I felt worried about my balance. But here I am, arms come up, straight up, lift up, hold on to your left wrist and start to crescent over to your right. Now, keep your hips where they are, keep your back leg where it is and crescent to your right, but now crescent a little bit to the front corner of your mat, the front right corner, okay? And then we're gonna circle clock, uh, like, like a clock, we're going counterclockwise around the circle and then back up to center. So we're making little circles with the trunk, over to the right, to the front right, to the front left, and back up. It should challenge your balance a little bit. Just one more time, circling, and back up, and center. Good, and then place your hands down. Now this time, do lean your hips forward, and then the knee will go right beyond the front toes. So we're really closing off that front hip joint, that front knee joint, challenging the front knee joint, Keep your right heel down for the moment and spread your toes through those right toes. Keep leaning forward. Make sure that right knee is not coming into the midline. If anything, it's widening off to the right. Lower your right hip more, right? Like you're trying to get your right butt cheek to touch your right heel. And then back your hips up, place your hands, lift your left knee up, sweep that right leg all the way back to three-legged dog. Right leg goes back up to the sky, big opening, and place the foot down. Now, come forward to plank pose. Hold your plank for a moment. You always have the option in these classes of lowering the knees first, and then with that, that way with integrity, right, with integration, I can lower my torso down. So I'll, I'll show that option as a nice way to go. Move my blocks out of the way. All right, so hands by the sides of the chest, shoulders curled back, toes can point straight behind you. Broaden your collarbones. Just hold this posture for a moment. Pushing the thigh bones down, the top of the thigh bones into the ground, pubic bone down, lift your low stomach, 
reach your legs behind you, extend out through the length of your spine. So now can you find very little tension, like my neck and shoulders are very easy here. I'm really barely using my hands. I'm using my core, the muscles along my spine. And then come all the way down. Make a little pillow with your hands. Turn your head to the right, your face to the right, and just take a breath. Breathe into the back body, nice and easy. Okay, coming back to the center again, hands by the sides of the chest again, lifting your shoulders away from the mat. Elbows are close into your rib cage. Lift your head and chest up, legs press into the mat. Lift your low stomach a little to support that low back. You might want to lengthen like I kind of like a little snake or salamander, shimmy my way out of my hips and then ground the legs back to the back of my mat again. Big inhale, lifting, find those low back muscles, but support them with your abdominals and then come all the way down again and take a break. So just pulsing that full engagement of the back body with the full release. So you could turn your head again, nice full breath into the low back. And the low back, it likes your attention, it likes your breath, it wants to be loved, <laughs> not just sort of beat up and dragged around, right? Recruited for everything. So nice big breath, just noticing the low back, the space there, the ease. Sometimes we have to pretend there's ease. <laughs> Sometimes pretending works, especially with back stuff. Okay, now back to the front, place your hands underneath your shoulders, tuck your toes, come onto your knees, and then on to, back to downward facing dog. And we'll walk the feet to the hands up to the top of the mat. Pushing down into your feet. Inhale, just look halfway up. That helps us set the legs. Bow. And then come all the way up to stretch. Using your legs, big stretch. Exhale, hands to your side. So hopefully over time, we use the low back less and less for that. Okay, second side. Big inhale. Exhale to bow. Inhale, look halfway up. Exhale, step your right foot back. Big long lunge. This time we're gonna place that back knee down. So again, you could pat it with whatever you have. I fold my mat underneath a lot of times just for that, be nice to my kneecaps. And then we're gonna come upright. So we're gonna lean my hips back in line with that back knee so I'm more straight up and down. Take my arms up, hold on to your right wrist. So shoulder, that way, this just keeps our shoulders from over lifting. We did this in the beginning with arms super straight and hugging the elbows, but in this case, Bend your elbows a little bit. Let the length come from the sides of your waist instead. Lower your left hip, right? So ground into that left sit bone, left foot. Inhale, and then we're gonna reach to the left. So first straight over to the left, but then we're gonna start to go clockwise, front left of the mat, front right corner of the mat, and back up. So just little circles, just two more. Slow, slow circles using your spine, trying to still lengthen through the sides of the waist, over to the left, big side stretch, and then to the front, and we challenge the balance a little bit, and just gyroscoping around the spine, back to center. Touch down. This time, lean your hips way far forward, like you're gonna take your left knee over your toes. Sometimes, um, like the stomach is in the way, or the hips are tight, you can always walk your left foot a little bit off to the left. Definitely take your, <clears throat> excuse me, definitely take your knee off to the left and then just leaning forward. My left heel is gonna stay down. I'm trying to scoop my left heel, um, scoop my left hip toward my left heel so that I'm really grounding into that Achilles tendon. Maybe for you, it's a big stretch on the right hip. I think that's true for a lot of people. All right. Hi, Seamus. And then, leaning back, hips go back, place your hands. We're gonna unfold the mat if you folded it, and lifting that left leg right up and back to three-legged dog. It goes straight up and back. And opening that hip back up, and then place the left foot down. Okay, now we're gonna come forward to plank. You have to move your cat out of the way. Okay, and this is where actually go ahead and get your strap or your bathrobe, belt, whatever you have, because we're gonna come onto our stomach, holding on to your strap. If you have a buckle on your strap, hold the buckle so you don't whap it around and hit your cat or yourself with it. Okay, <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. 
take your strap out in front of you, holding on. My hands are way out or shoulder distance apart at first. Seamus, I need you to move slightly. Okay, but off the strap. All right, so <laughs> forehead down, holding the strap. This is gonna be really fun. Um, take the strap overhead. Now look, I can really widen my arms so that I'm not hurting my shoulders. If I meet too much resistance and that just feels really precarious in the shoulders, abandon mission and, and let go of the strap. Otherwise, I'm taking the hands back to my waistline. Okay, so I'm just gonna experiment with that. Head is down, chest is down. I'm just experimenting. Can I get that range of motion? I'm pulling the strap apart. I'm holding on to it, but I'm isometrically pulling it apart. It means I'm not actually moving my hands on the strap, but I'm trying to rip the strap in half as I go back and forth, okay? Now, if that's really easy, you could just move your hands slightly closer, another inch, and challenge that range of motion, but be nice to your shoulders. It should not be painful. It should not feel like you're gonna dislocate your shoulders, all right? Now, we're gonna add on. You don't have to hold the strap. You could just have your arms straight out in front of you. Otherwise, it looks like this. We inhale, lift up, legs lift, arms come back behind us, and then exhale forward and rest. We're just gonna do that two more times. Inhale, lift arms up behind me all the way to my butt cheeks over the strap, legs are up, and then exhale forward and rest. And one more time, pulling that strap apart. Again, you could just do this with arms free form and then exhale forward and rest. Let go of your strap right there. Place your hands underneath your shoulders. Sit all the way back, extended child's pose. Downward puppy, so slide your hands a little forward, spread your fingers, lift up and back, downward facing dog. Front ribs are tucking in that little bit, knees might have to be bent. Walk your feet forward to your hands, standing forward bend. So bend your knees enough that you can touch down, touch your hands to the mat. Push into your feet, inhale, stretch all the way up. Exhale, hands to your sides. Okay, a little standing leg, single leg balance. We'll do tree pose to start. So standing on your right leg, we'll pick up the left leg first. So tree pose, remember you can do any variation here, foot on shin. I like to try to come up to the inner thigh. You can also use a windowsill or a wall or your bureau or a chair for balance. But I do encourage people to work on the balance without anything even if it's a disaster. You, you, in your opinion, it's a disaster. It's a good check-in to see where your balance is at, to see where your leg strength is at, your ankles, your feet, and your glute muscles. That's really what's holding you up here. Relax the shoulders, lift up through the crown of the head. Then keeping that grounding through that standing leg, we'll take the arms out to the sides. So palms face up, shoulders relaxed, Bend your elbows a little bit. That way you're not gonna overextend through the neck muscles. In fact, if anything, open the collarbones, but let the shoulder blades sit more on the back. Keep your chin level to the horizon, right? It's tempting to tuck the chin or maybe to lift the chin. Keep your gaze level. Take another breath here. And then keep your arms there for the moment. Place your foot down, take your hands down. Good, so this is good focus. Okay, standing on the left leg. We'll pick up that right foot. So foot either to shin, somewhere above the knee. It helps, I get my heel up high, but then it helps to push my opposite leg into the foot. So I'm using that leg to help me, the standing leg. It's pushing to the midline to help it stick. Your pants make a big difference too. Like the shininess of the pants does matter. <laughs> okay, hands together just to start. Integrate those front ribs so they're softening down. Soften the tops of the shoulders. And then we'll take our arms out to your side. So the elbows bend a little bit. This way you can use your shoulder blades. It's good to check in with the position of the shoulder blades on your rib cage. Let them sit back on the ribs. So that means the top of the shoulders are letting go, right? The, the trapezius muscles are letting go. Your neck can be long, the chin level with the horizon, standing tall, push into your foot. Lift up out of those low abdominal muscles up off the pelvic floor. Big inhale. Keep your arms there. Place your foot down, exhaling. Exhale the arms down. 
Okay, let's do a standing crescent, but also with soft arms. So take your arms up, hold on to your, we're gonna really bend the elbows a lot, more than you think. Um, I know I'm not quite in the camera there, but uh, this much with the elbows bent. So my hands are just barely above my head, okay? And then feet together to make that nice strong line through the legs. Now lift through the sides of the waist, but don't lift through your shoulders. Relax the top of the shoulders. Keep your head right underneath your hands as you go over to your right. So don't let your head and arms move relative to each other. You have to lift up through the sides of your waist and bend over. It takes a little discipline for us uh, overachievers to not overextend the neck and shoulders. The effort has to come from down in the sides of the waist, push into your legs, and again, hand, hand and head, they stay together, and then come back up to center. Switch your grip. So this is more about the side waist, the strength of the side body, than um, stretching the neck and shoulders. Elbows are bent, head on top of hands on top of head, and come up and over to your left side. Push into your leg. See how much length and strength you can get out of the sides of the waist without engaging the upper neck, the back muscles, the back of the skull. Can your jaw even be let go here? Use your core muscles. Use your spine instead, and then come back up to center. Good, and release your arms. Okay. One more little shoulder exercise there. Bend your elbows in a W, palms facing forward. Bring your elbows to the front plane, your hands slightly back, so your shoulders are back. Now, a lot of times people want to send the rib cage forward when they take the shoulders back, but don't. Actually keep your ribs just stacked on top of your hips. So elbows forward, hands back. Get your shoulder blades on your back. Keep them there and just start to straighten your elbows a little bit and then bend them again. So we're just doing this back and forth like uh, a shallow W, a deeper W, as if we were moving toward a V, but we're not gonna quite get there. Keep your shoulder blades snug really strong onto your rib cage, purposely hug them on. See if you can feel left and right shoulder blades on the rib cage, tuck those front ribs in. Again, it's very tempting to let the ribs fly out, draw the ribs back, that's it. And just one more time, so it's like a little shoulder flossing, but standing, good, and then release. All right. Now we're going to go into a, a very short sta uh, standing pose sequence. So from the top of your mat, we will step the uh, left foot back, long lunge. I'm going to face you guys, so I'm going to turn the front of my mat this way, okay? Step your left foot back, long lunge, pivot your back heel down. Bend your right knee, bring your elbow, your forearm to your knee. Left arm from the side waist sweeps over the front and over the side of the ear. And now we're working on getting that, that bent knee, front knee, to a right angle. So letting that hip go down a bit and then resisting with the back leg. So my inner back leg is strong. My inner thigh is sweeping away from my front heel. As if I'm trying to barn door open or pry open from thigh to heel. Push more into your right heel. Lengthen into that back leg, push into that back leg, nice long side body, extend out through the crown of your head. Big inhale here. And then exhale, sweep that top arm down, push into your legs, come all the way up, facing the front. We're gonna do a, a forward bend first before we do the second side. You can bring your hands to your waist. Feet are now parallel, so you have to pivot your feet. They're gonna face forward. Um, parallel for most of us means the heels will look slightly wide to you from your vantage point. Turn your heels out a little bit, a little bit, okay? Then hands on the waist, lifting that low stomach up as you bow forward. You may have to bend your knees a tiny bit, that's fine. Touch your hands to the floor. Inhale, extend the chest. Exhale, bow forward. If you do bend your knees just a little, make sure they're, they're widening. They're not collapsing in toward each other. You can then Either stay extended, right? Stay extended through the low back, especially if your hamstrings are tight. Or you can really bow forward, that's fine too. Walk your hands back a little bit. So it should be an inner thigh stretch, hamstring stretch. Maybe for you it's an outer ankle stretch. I'm still gonna try to draw the shoulders gently onto my back wherever I'm at. If you're very tight in the hamstrings, the floor is really far away. This is a good use of your arm extenders of those blocks. Or you can widen your feet a little bit, right? and that will make the floor get closer. Um, it won't make the stretch less torturous, but at least you can then touch the floor. 
Um, bending your knees helps too, right? So I can bend my knees and bring the floor a little closer. Take another breath here. Do push into your legs. Hug the leg muscles into the bone. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhale, hands to your sides. Inhale, come all the way up. Good. And now you're going to be facing the back of your mat. Turn your left toes to the back of your mat, your right heel in, depending how you're oriented. Yep. And then bending your, your knee, your left knee, elbow to knee. We're doing side angle pose. Take that right arm over the ear. Nice, long side body. Okay, get, get into your pose. Push into your feet. Push into that back foot a lot. Push into your front heel. Now slightly move your ribs back a little bit and rotate around your spine as if you're going to look up into your right armpit. Make sure your neck is still easy. So one way to, to help the neck is to find a relationship between the head and the spine. So find your tailbone, lengthen through the spine, all the way up through the crown of the head. Push into your feet a little bit stronger. And then, using the legs, come all the way up. And one more time, we're going to bow forward. So hands on your hips, pivot your feet parallel again. Make sure they're level side to side, front to back. You're not doing some weird twist in the pelvis. Bow forward. Place your hands down. Again, you could have your hands out on some yoga blocks or on some nice big books. Last week, I was using the complete work of Sherlock Holmes. It was very handy. <laughs> and then we'll bow. Now, check out a little bit in this, in this um, variation. I want you to sh slightly shift left to right. Just push your weight into your left foot and then your right foot. And your left foot and your right foot. And notice if one side is easier to push into than the other, if one inner thigh feels tighter, if one outer ankle feels tighter, just give your brain that little bit of feedback. Push into one heel and then the other heel. And then find center. Let your head go. Work towards straightening your legs if you can, but the leg muscles are hugging in. Your sit bones are still trying to be wide. You're not trying to tuck your tail, at least not purposefully. Lift the low stomach. And then look halfway up. So this, particularly if your low back bothers you, you will want to bend your knees to use your legs, use your hamstrings to come up to stand. Okay, so we don't just pull the low back to come all the way up. Yeah. Okay, step your feet together. Come back to the front of your mat. I'm going to keep facing you, but you can come back to the front of your mat. And we're going to go into a squat. So from there, um, sorry, sorry, take your feet hip distance apart. And then actually go ahead and turn your toes out a tiny bit. That'll help your squat potential. <laughs> um, take your arms in front of you. Lower yourself, right, as we start to sit low. The knees will come over the toes, at least briefly, right? And then, if you can, try to sit back on your heels. It helps to imagine you're holding on to something out in front of you, like a pair of um, straps or your bureau or something like that. And then we're going to come all the way to sit all the way down. Yep. Stretch your legs straight out in front of you. And staff pose. So the legs are straight out in front of you, hip distance apart. I do, I do pull my thigh bones back a little bit and I make sure my kneecaps are pointing straight up and down. My toes are pointing straight up and down. Hands to your sides. So this is a deceptively challenging position. Um, meaning for most people, this is pretty hard, even though it looks very simple. My hands are right at the sides of my hips. I'm pressing my arms straight and strong. My elbows are straight, but I'm not scrunching my shoulders. And I'm really trying to lengthen through the sides of my waist as I push my thigh bones into the earth. Even pressing left to right, left and right sit bones, and then even lifting through the sides of my waist. Now just slightly tuck your chin. Lift through the spine from the top of the tailbone up through the top of the neck, lengthen the back of the skull, and then release. Okay, good. Now take your strap, whatever you have, and we're going to come on to our back. Come all the way onto your back, roll back. Should feel nice to rest your spine now. You can have both knees bent to start with. And in fact, let's, let's keep the strap to the side for the moment, but just close by. 
Cross your right ankle over your left knee. And then pick up your left leg. Now you can either hold on behind the hamstring, that's the back of the thigh, or the shin, your choice. In either case, the head should be comfortable. So I'm not going into some neck arch or upper back arch. If that's happening, I probably need to back off. I either have to hold on to my hamstring or I might need my strap to hold on as, a, like, as an arm extender. And that way I'm not going into some weird position in my upper neck and back. It's meant to be a hip opener. It's not meant to be um, anything super uncomfortable. So it's actually a pretty gentle, easy hip opener where the low back can be resting into the mat. The upper back can be resting into the mat. Take one more breath and release. And then we'll go ahead and place both feet down again. Okay. And crossing the left ankle over the right knee. I didn't mention this on the other side, but my left hand is threading through the legs, right hand on the outside. And either holding my hamstring or my shin head rests back. And that's all I'm doing. I'm just resting here. I'm not trying to pull the knees in. I'm not trying to do anything else. Just resting the low back, resting the upper back. A lot of yogi people are flexible enough that this is like not even a stretch at all. And that is fine. You don't have to be feeling a stretch. It's just a nice relaxation, external hip mobility, in, internal thigh uh, tension adjuster, right? Not everything has to be a dramatic muscle ripping joint stretching thing. <laughs> okay, take a big inhale and then release. Place that foot down, place your left foot down. Okay, now take your right knee in and take your strap and hook right behind your toes. Stretch your right leg to the sky. We're gonna keep the leg vertical, so we're not gonna try to take it toward our head at all. Then stretch your left leg long. If in stretching your left leg long, you now have to go into an upper back back bend, just bend your left knee a little bit, maybe a lot, okay? So that just has to do with hamstring tension, pelvis tilt and all that. So we won't worry about that too much. But we're gonna focus on the, the straight leg up to the sky. For now, relax your neck and shoulders. Again, relax that upper back into the floor. Reach through your right heel, purposely really reach that right heel. Try to get your heel above your toes. Maybe you can't see that they're above your toes, but imagine they are. And then relax. And then we'll do that one more time. Really reach that right heel, extend, 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 and relax. Okay, now we're gonna take the leg off to the right. So holding on with your right hand, open the leg off to the right. Left arm can counterbalance off to the left, or you could have your left hand on your hip. Taking the right leg off to the right, it's highly variable for people in terms of their hip, uh, the way your hips are. Uh, and that really has a lot to do with the way you're born, honestly. So don't worry about if that right leg touches the ground. In this case, we're gonna let the, the left hip is gonna stay pretty grounded. So that means my right leg does not come down to the ground. I'm holding it with my right hand up in the, up in the air, maybe a foot off the ground. Nice big breath. You can extend out through both legs. So I'm extending that left leg long, really, really reaching through the legs. Another extra side body stretch. I can take my left arm along my ear and reach that whole left side. So I'm not giving up and letting the left body totally lift off the mat. I'm, I'm resisting a little bit and I'm resisting my front ribs from lifting. And then hand back to the side, leg back up to the center. And we'll place that leg down, okay? Left leg, come all the way up, hook right behind your big toe. Find that nice grounding from the, the leg being a pillar down to the back of the pelvis. So again, not trying to pull the toes toward the nose. We're not doing that stretch right now. We're just trying to ground the thigh bone into the pelvis, pelvis into the earth. Let your rib cage go. And then for a moment, reach through your heel. Try to get that heel above your toes, reach, 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 and relax. And then one more time, I find when I'm reaching through my left heel, I'm reaching through my right heel too. I can't seem to do one at a time. And then relax. And just hang out there for a moment. Pelvis is nice and level. Now, as you go off to your left, you're gonna hold on with your left hand. Right arm could counterbalance off to the right. 
As you go off to your left, I have the wall in the way, so don't worry, you'll just keep going. You're gonna keep your right hip pretty grounded. So it might lift a little bit, but we're resisting. And we're keeping those front ribs snugged in. Then I could take my right hand either to the low belly, just to help rest that, soften those front ribs. Or I could stretch that right arm overhead and really reach through both legs, really get that extension through both legs. Little bit of external rotation in the left leg, meaning I'm turning my heel a little more up toward the sky, my toes a little more down toward the floor. Big, full breath, really stretch long, long, long. And then soften, soften the ribs, take your hand back to your stomach. And we'll take that left leg back up to vertical again. Unhook your toes, let that leg come down. Okay. And a twist. We're gonna do two variations on twists here. So drawing both knees up. The first one is a back and forth, a nice slow back and forth gut twist. And then the second one will hold. So the first one, because it's more of a pronounced gut twist, we're not gonna let the shoulders move. So bend your elbows. Back of the hands are facing the floor. That means palms face up. Draw your shoulder blades onto your back. So left, right, snug them under. Okay, so now your upper back is on the mat. Your shoulder blades are on the mat. Um, some people, their hands don't touch down here. That's okay. But, but your palms are still face up. Elbows bend. Hug your knees to each other. Hug your heels to each other. Don't let your heels move relative to each other. Take your knees over to the right. Don't let your heels slide. Don't let your knees slide. And then come back up to center. So we're just doing that much to the left. As much as you can keep your knees and heels together and then back up. Okay, now keep your shoulder blades down. Remember I said your shoulders aren't moving? Come back up. Just going slowly side to side. Not that far. Like I'm getting to about 45 degrees with my knees to one side and then the other. And I'm just working those muscles around my spine, around the shoulder blades, nice and easy. Okay, coordinate with the breath. Go inhale as I go down. Exhale as I come back up. Or I might try... Exhale to one side, inhale back up. Experiment a little bit, see what you like. My knees are tucking in up toward my chest. That means my tailbone is a little bit tucked as I go side to side. And then we'll come back to the center. Okay, now for our more traditional twist, keeping the knees and the heels stacked. Take the knees all the way over to the right. Now your left shoulder is definitely gonna come off the mat, at least for a moment. Knees are stacked. I could use my right hand to keep the knees stacked and kind of release some of that tension trying to hold there. Then my left shoulder tries to drop back down. Gaze is probably toward the sky, but it could be a little bit over to your left. It's totally up to you. You can soften your eyes. You can close your eyes here. Just breathing. Breathing into the upper ribs. Find that nice diagonal line from lower right stomach up through the left shoulder rotating around the spine, big inhale, full exhale. One more time, big inhale and full exhale. And then draw your knees into your chest, come back up through center, shoulder blades on the back, take your knees over to your left, that right shoulder is almost certainly gonna lift off, line your, your knees and feet back up. That means we're going all the way over to the floor. So the knees are on the floor. If that means your right shoulder is off the floor, that's fine, right? And then if that shoulder is really tight, I mean, for me, that doesn't bother me. I like that stretch. My, roll, my right shoulder does tend to be really tight. So notice my shoulder is definitely not on the ground. A lot of you will have your shoulder on the ground and that's fine. But if it's such a tight stretch that is causing pain, then I could bend the elbow in various ways, or right? I could put, just put my hand on my sides of my ribs, that will take a lot of the tension out of that situation. I'm still getting the twist through the spine, through the kidneys. All right, so I'm gonna enjoy that stretch. I bend my elbow, palm face up. Nice full breath from the left lower stomach up to the right shoulder. Soften your eyes. Big inhale. Exhale. One more breath. And then drawing the knees back up through the center. Just hug both knees into your chest. 
Again, lift your head and chest up if you want. That will help you line your spine back up as you place your head back down. And we're going to stretch the legs out for Shavasana, for relaxation. You have the option, of course, of doing that with knees bent, right? So you could do that. That gives you less tension in the low back. Um, or you could put something underneath your legs, a blanket or a, a pillow underneath the thigh bones close to the knees to help release a little of that tension. Otherwise, I'm stretching my legs out, take my palms face up on either side. I just gently tucking the shoulder blades under to get centered there, but not creating too much tension in the back body. My back body is still nice and broad. Take a big inhale. And then exhale, let it go. Let the back body sink back into the earth. One more time. Big inhale, the front body expands. And then exhale, really let it soften, soften, soften. Close your eyes. And rest back. I'm not going to do a whole body scan, but just noticing some key points like your head. We've been using our heads a lot the last few weeks. Let's let the brain rest. Rest it back into the back of the skull. The skull back into the earth. Let go of the hinge of the jaw and the ears. The base of the tongue and the throat. Make sure you can swallow. It's all easy there. And then soften the sides of the neck and the upper shoulders. Your palms are face up so your arms can just gently roll open and open the top of the chest easy. Keeping the top of the chest open, soften your front ribs, right? So check that you're not trying to extend through the back at all. Just a nice grounding through that upper back, back into the earth, rounding back into the earth. We'll just let the legs and pelvis feel good and heavy. Soft toes, open the soles of your feet, letting go of any tension there and any tension in the palms of your hands. I'm taking another couple minutes to really let your breath go. No control over the breath at all. Softening the edges of your skin so the light around you is bathing the skin, maybe even a little bit translucent coming through the skin into your body. Light from your body. It's a soft radiance back out. Of course, at home, you can take as long as you like in Shavasana. I encourage a full 10 minutes or more. Your cat will probably encourage a full hour. So please take as long as you need in Shavasana. And when you are ready to sit up, do so with good ease, keep some weightiness to your body. I'm gonna draw my knees into my chest, just keeping my hips really heavy, my back heavy, going on to my right side, keeping that upper body very heavy, resting the head on my arms. Each time I move, I'm refining that groundedness, that ease in the body. 
slowly coming up. I use my hands to help me sit up so I'm not using too much of the leg tension. And finding any comfortable seated position, right? Most of us do not love this kind of seated position. That's okay. Anything works. I'll take our hands to the center just to find that midline. Grounding back down through the pelvis, lift up through the heart and open your eyes. Thank you.